Imagine a world where your smartphone is slower, electric cars are rare, and wind turbines struggle to generate enough power. Now picture an element so powerful that it revolutionizes technology, driving the green energy revolution and shaping the modern world. This element is a rare earth metal, one of nature's hidden gems, quietly embedded in our daily lives. What is it you ask? The answer lies in the depths of the periodic table an element known for its unique properties, neodymium. Neodymium, symbolized as ND and carrying the atomic number 60, is not just another element. It's a game changer, powering everything from electric motors to advanced magnets. Today we will talk about the element that almost everyone uses, but don't know they do. Let's dive into the fascinating world of neodymium. Welcome to Cube Chemistry, the channel where we will discuss all the elements of the periodic table and also do experiments. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Now inside of this cube we have a little piece of silver, almost black metal. This is neodymium. Now, we're going to talk about it today and again this cube is beautiful. Can shake it around a little bit so you can see what's inside. Neodymium belongs to the lanthanide series of elements, which are often referred to as rare earth metals. Despite the term rare, neodymium is not particularly scarce. In fact, it is relatively abundant in the earth's crust, with a concentration comparable to that of nickel and cobalt. However, the challenge lies not in the scarcity, but in the complexity of extraction and refinement. Neodymium does not occur in its pure form in nature. Except for a few noble metals like gold, silver and copper, most metals are highly reactive and are therefore never found in their pure form but rather in compounds, usually salts or oxides. For neodymium this typically means that it's found in mixtures of phosphates, carbonates and fluorides. That includes several other lanthanides. Instead, it is typically found in minerals such as monazite and bastanaazite, which are rich in various rare earth elements. These minerals contain a mix of lanthanides. Separating neodymium from its companions is no small feat. The extraction process is complex and resource intensive, often requiring the use of harsh chemicals, extensive refining and precise techniques to isolate the neodymium. One of the primary challenges is the similarity in chemical properties among lanthanides. Why is that? The additional electrons that lanthanides have compared to lanthanum are located in nearly circular paths, called the 4F orbitals. Because these paths are deep inside the atom, the electrons are mostly hidden by outer, more elliptical orbits. As a result, these inner electrons have very little interactions with their surrounding atoms. These elements have nearly identical ionic radii and often behave similar in chemical reactions, making it difficult to selectively extract one element without affecting the others. Now, in short, that means since they behave all very similarly, doing chemistry with them will, in cases, lead to similar results. This requires sophisticated separation techniques such as solvent extraction and ion exchange which can be costly and environmental taxing. Now what makes neodymium special? Its standout feature are its magnetic properties. Neodymium magnets, known as NDFEB magnets, are the strongest permanent magnets available. They are incredibly powerful despite their small size, capable of holding up to a thousand times their weight. This strength is due to neodymium's ability to retain high levels of magnetization, making it a crucial component in various high-tech applications. But where does neodymium get its name from? The element's name is derived from the Greek words neos, meaning new, and didymos, meaning twin. This name reflects its close relationship with the element prasiodymium, from which it was separated. In the early 19th century, scientists were exploring a group of elements we now know as the rare earth metals, the lanthanides. During this period, chemists faced significant challenges in distinguishing between these elements due to their similar chemical properties. 
One such example was the element initially believed to be a single substance called didymium. Didymium was first identified in 1841 by the Swedish chemist Carl Gustav Mosander, who separated it from the mineral cerite. He named the element didymium since it seemed an element so close to lanthanum, he thought it to be its twin element. However, Mosander couldn't fully isolate the components of didymium, leading him to believe that it was a single element. For several years, this element was thought to be one of the rare earth metals used primarily in glass manufacturing to produce a distinctive color. In 1885, Karl Auer von Welsbach managed to do the near impossible. It involved meticulous and groundbreaking process of separating what was previously thought to be one element, didymium. He managed to separate it into two elements, neodymium and praseodymium. Let's take a closer look at what he did. Welsbach, an Austrian chemist with a strong background in rare earth chemistry, was not satisfied with the existing belief that didymium was a single element. By studying the spectra, the light patterns emitted with when elements are heated of didymium, he noticed subtle differences that suggested it may actually be a mixture of two elements rather than one. One of Welsbach's key tools in this discovery was spectroscopy. We discussed this earlier. By examining the light spectra of didymium compounds, he observed distinct spectral lines that indicated the presence of two different elements. At the time, spectroscopy was a cutting edge technique and Welsbach's ability to use it effectively demonstrated his advanced analytical skills. Now why did this work? For interaction with light, it doesn't really matter if the electrons are inside or outside of the atom. That's why spectroscopy is a suitable method to observe the differences between the lanthanides. After recognizing that didymium was likely a mixture, Welsbach had another puzzle to solve. How do we separate these two components? This was no small feat, as the elements had nearly identical chemical properties. He used careful and precise chemical methods, such likely involved fractional crystallization, a process where small differences in solubility are used to separate compounds. During fractional crystallization, Welsbach would dissolve didymium compounds in a solution and then gradually cool the solution to precipitate out different salts. Because neodymium and praseodymium had slightly different solubilities, he was able to isolate them into separate substances through multiple rounds of crystallization. Once Welsbach had separated the two elements, he confirmed his discovery by analyzing their properties. He compared the spectra and other chemical behaviors, establishing that he had indeed isolated two distinct elements. This work was painstaking and required precision, as even small impurities could have confounded the results. Welsbach's identification of neodymium and praseodymium was confirmed by the unique spectral lines and the distinct colors of their salts. Neodymium salts tend to have a reddish purple color, while praseodymium salts appear green. Welsbach published his findings, which were met with great interest in the scientific community. His work not only added two elements to the periodic table, but also demonstrated the need of carefully re-examining other supposed single elements, especially among rare earths. His discovery was a catalyst for further research in rare earth chemistry and opened up new possibilities for technological applications as the unique properties of neodymium and praseodymium became better understood. As for where we can find neodymium on earth, it is primarily mined in China, which controls the majority of the global production. However, deposits can also be found in other parts of the world, including United States, Australia and Brazil. Neodymium's properties make it invaluable in modern technology, particularly in the field of magnetism. The most prominent application is the creation of neodymium magnets, which are essential for the functioning of electric motors, particularly in electric vehicles. We use it in electric motors, such as the one that I'm showing here. When I run current through the coils, a magnetic field is created. Then, if I give the motor a small push, it starts to spin. Neodymium's strong magnetic properties allow for smaller, lighter and more efficient motors, which is why they are the cornerstone of the development of modern electric vehicles. We only use these magnets for electric motors that run on direct current. But neodymium isn't limited to electric motors. 
It is also found in hard drives, headphones, speakers and even MRI machines. In renewable energy, new demium magnets play a critical role in wind turbines, where their strength and durability are essential for converting wind into electricity efficiently. The powerful magnets help to generate electricity with a minimal mechanical wear and tear, making wind energy more sustainable and cost effective. But the significance of neodymium doesn't just stop there. It is also used in laser technology, especially ND laser or neodymium lasers. Now why do we use neodymium for lasers? The energy levels of the 4F electrons are barely affected by the crystal in which the atoms are embedded. As a result, they cannot easily share the energy of an electron that has been moved to a higher F orbit with the rest of the crystal. They hold on to that energy for a long time until they eventually release it as light, actually infrared light. This is important because the energy is pumped in by a flash lamp, which takes milliseconds to deliver enough energy. All that energy can then be stored without being lost until it is suddenly released as a laser light in a pulse of about 10 nanoseconds, which are vital for the industry of cutting, welding and even medical procedures. These applications underscore neodymium's versatility and its critical role in advancing various fields of technology. Neodymium may be a hidden element, but its impact on the modern world is undeniable. From powering electric vehicles and wind turbines to enabling precise medical procedures, neodymium's unique properties make it a cornerstone of technological advancement. As we continue to push the boundaries of innovation, neodymium will remain at the forefront quietly powering the devices and systems that drive our daily lives. So, the next time you charge your electric car or listen to music through headphones, remember the vital role that neodymium plays in making it all possible. In this video, I decided to go more in depth of the chemistry of the element itself. If you like this video or think I missed anything, make sure to put it in the comments. Also, if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. See you next week!